we'll first take a look at this. Let's live it up. I used to work for South Yorkshire Police in, up until 2010, July, uh, as the principal intelligence analyst. And uh, I suppose I'm uh, infamous now for being dismissed from the police. Uh, and I'm in a reasonably high profile employment tribunal case with them uh, for the dismissal, which I claim is unfair. Okay, and, and why were you dismissed? Well, I held a belief that they said it was incompatible. Um, but there's a lot more to it than that. Basically, um, I made a stance at work regarding an uh, assignment I was doing. The assignment concerned a strategic threat, and the threat um, partic in particular concerned the domain of counter-terrorism. And what caused me a problem was that um, I was expected to go along with a government narrative which said that the threat was coming from Islamic terrorism. And um, I made a stance against that because without seeing proofs, I wasn't prepared to say that when I thought there was a more sinister threat around, and that was coming from, sadly, an uh, internal tyranny. And I say that on the basis of uh, issues like 9 11 and the London bombings on July the 7th, 2005, um, and our wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. So I saw the threat as something quite different from what the government narrative wanted me to say is the main threat and what my employers, so the officer of police, senior managers wanted me to say. And can you give some examples how you came to those conclusions? Yes, um, it was funny really because in the course of having this assignment to do with a strategic threat and what's more it was a little bit uh, beyond, uh, different from a strategic threat in as much as it was a simplified model of threat. I, um, simply uh, had not anticipated a problem and um, I dropped on in the week before the assignment was due, which was on the 8th of July 2010, I came across um, information on the internet all of a sudden, uh, quite by accident, at home, um, which alerted me to the possibility that 9-11 was an inside job. Now that came from uh, sources such as Alex Jones, uh, Jesse Ventura at first, that was, that, that was what I dropped on in the first instance and that prompted me to look at other things that were available readily on the internet which included the film uh, Loose Change and 9-11 Ripple Effect and having sat through and watched those I was prompted to try and read a little bit more about it and it wasn't <laughs> difficult to come to a conclusion almost immediately that something was radically wrong with the government's narrative, the US government's narrative on 9-11 and um, I was familiar with uh, issues such as the New World Order and um, what was underpinning that so I, I did see 9-11 immediately um, I was alerted to the possibility I saw that as a, an example of the New World Order at work and I was horrified and shocked uh, and the problem I had with that was it immediately put me in a difficult position because I knew in a week's time I was expected to be in front of a board at South Yorkshire Police giving a presentation which was producing the strategic threat assessment matrix where top of the table in the time of threat stakes would be the threat coming from Islamic terrorism and I was think my way of thinking was that I didn't believe, I no longer believed that this was 19 Muslim suicidal maniacs that crashed into that building um, I believed it was something different and uh, an inside job um, deliberately perpetrated to blame the Muslims in order to justify a foreign, an aggressive foreign policy agenda in the Middle East, which was you know the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq that were to follow close on the hand of this. So I saw it as something sinister, and of course without without proofs, I wasn't prepared to lie. And this was just on the basis of 9/11 alone. Um, so I was thrown into a state of shock and I was at work, the, after it dawned on me, I was at work the next day and I was struggling with the assignment then, 
in terms of how do we cope with this? If I stick my head above the parapet, I'm in trouble. Uh, and I actually went and spoke to a minister at lunchtime and said, I've got a crisis of conscience. And he said, Have you, you know, shocked by what I told him about 9 11? Bear in mind, this was open source information, so I wasn't breaching Official Secrets Act. But I simply uh, got the shock when he turned around and said, Have you thought about the London bombings? And I was rocked back in my seat and I'm a bit embarrassed because I hadn't actually considered the London bombings. Very stretch of the imagination. But when I got home that evening, I, I, I uh, resolved to check out the London bombings and with the expectation of reassuring myself that at least it wasn't the, the case in the United Kingdom. Because uh, I couldn't at that stage believe that our government would you know, like be capable of um, um, doing such a thing as fabricating a story a I up, um, on the London bombings. But below, when I looked at it at home, I was immediately it, worried because films like uh, Mind the Gap, Ludicrous Diversion, the uh, like 7 7 Ripple there. Effect, were readily available on the internet. I watched as many um, videos that I could and then read the official account and th that immediately alerted me and on the back of 9-11 um, I felt as though I wasn't now able to say that the threat was coming from Islamic terrorism and the time was approaching when the assignment was due so I went in to the police my, my director of intelligence on the 6th of July with a bit of a red alert saying look the internet is exposing 9-11 uh, um, and people are waking up to it. I says, and it's also exposing the London bombings. And they said that that in itself is a problem for community cohesion. As people start to wake up, there will be massive widespread distrust in the government. And of course, uh, I, I, I was a bit reluctant to go full frontal with this, but I did say, and by the way, I don't believe 9-11 anymore, and I don't believe the London bombings was as a government narrative anymore and you're expecting me to say that the threat was from Islamic terrorism in a day's time would you please show me some proof now just that alone alerted my director of intelligence to that fact my director of intelligence then said Tony you and I will never get them to tell the truth so he didn't say I was wrong he just, and he said we're just a government foot soldiers so basically they were asking me to skirt around the notion of it being an inside job and carry on as normal and say that the threat was coming from Islamic terrorism. They also asked me at that point in time, just by giving them that alert, to go to occupational health and get yourself checked out. Admitted it was a bit of a, it, this was this took a, this was a courageous thing to do for me to stick my head above the parapet knowing that it could land me in big trouble. I wasn't naive. But I didn't expect them to sort of immediately push me towards occupational health. That in itself was menacing. Um, and at this stage, on the 6th of July, they had still, they were still hoping to persuade me to go along with them with what I now consider to be a lie and ignore and turn a blind eye to my own fi uh, findings, albeit these findings were outside of work. And so that was the situation and they wrapped me up on co in cotton socks on the 7th of July. Um, looked at my assignments to make sure I was in a position to deliver at the board meeting the next day. And I was, because I'd done all the scoring of these matrices. Um, it, at the time, I'd scored it up in the belief that the threat was indeed coming from Islamic terrorism because I believed the government rhetoric. So I'd, I'd accepted that initially as the truth, and nothing but the truth. Um, and nothing that was coming to me by my special branch analysts that would give me sanitised reports ever differed, ever differed from the government narrative. So I suddenly saw this as a challenge for me, that do I perpetuate the lie and just accept the government narrative and hand out the strategic threat assessment matrix, um, knowing what I know. And I, th I come to the conclusion my conscience wouldn't allow me to do this. So although they thought I was going to do it, I was going to go along with it on the 7th, by the time I got home on the 7th of July 2010, exactly five years to the day of the London bombings, I resolved that, that my time had come to make a stance the next morning. So my tactic was to get in work extra early. So I got into work at 6 o'clock in the morning 
and I looked at all my assignments that had all been prepared to delivery for the board meeting that afternoon, and in particular the front sheets of the strategic threat assessment matrix. And I did sort of scored it all up uh, in accordance with what I considered to be the threat and harm and the risk. And instead, and I looked at it and said, "This is all rubbish in the context of 9/11-77 being inside jobs." So basically, I bastardised the whole front sheet with the scoring system and put in some ludicrous-looking scores um, that focused in on the counter-terrorism domain and focused in particular on 9-11 and 7-7. Now the strategic threat assessment matrix fed the control strategy and it was also delivering the control strategy that day or a proposal for the control strategy which again had a front sheet and that covered up to about um, 16 or so domains and themes that the force would focus on for the year. And behind these themes would be aims and objectives and rationale why it was a priority. And instead of actually showing them that front tree that I'd prepared, again, I'd bastardised that and crossed that. And this would have things like how we tackle burglary dwelling, how we tackle public protection issues such as child abuse, how we tackle high volume crime as well as counter terrorism. And I just completely crossed out everything is irrelevant other than the counter terrorism domain, where I put in a little note, in, well, in large font size 9 11 truth, 7 7 truth. And when, I, when the boss comes in at 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, I knocked on his door and said, do you want a quick look at the control strategy for the day and the strategic test assessment matrix? Now the boss hadn't seen my preparation for this. It was another manager who'd checked me out the previous day. Uh, and I thrust it in front of his nose. And he got the shock of his life, basically, when he saw my ludicrous looking scoring sheet, the threat the assessment, and my proposal for the force control strategy that afternoon. And he, he immediately caught on that what I was doing was making a stance and he wasn't going to change my mind. And although he said, look, again he said, you and I will never get them to change and we're just a government foot soldiers. But he realised that I was making a stance and that this now was going to derail the board meeting that afternoon. And by this time, some of the fear had gone and um, I decided, and he, see, he decided to send me home and asked me to produce a report to explain the situation, in particular explain my stance. What he didn't want, and he made clear, was he didn't want my analysis as to why I thought 9-11 and 7-7 were an inside job. He just wanted me to explain why I felt compelled to do what I did and not deliver at the Intelligence Strategy Management Board, which was the board meeting. So off I went home and, and prepared a report over the weekend and, and, and took the report in. Um, now, I call it entitled the report a rich picture um, of an ignoble lie, and the rich picture referred to the government's counter terrorism strategy. And rich picture involved collecting information, intelligence, primarily targeting on the Muslim community as a result of the government's narrative on the terror threat, which was from Islamic extremism. And I saw that now as a putrid strategy already because it was based on what? The falsehood behind the narrative of the London bombings and 9-11. And so I saw this now as demonising the Muslim communities and South Yorkshire Police has a Muslim community both in Rotherham and Sheffield um, and therefore I felt it was my duty and my conscience wouldn't allow me to do anything else other than to make that stance and, and I didn't pull any punches in this report. I said I'm a principal intelligence analyst, not a spin doctor. Uh, I'm not your Alistair Campbell. Um, a principal analyst is there to objectively analyse. You asked me to do analysis and my analysis is that the threat comes more, seems to be coming more from internal tyranny in the counter-terrorism domain. Um, and to this day, um, you know, 18 months later, I've not come across anything that would lead to me believe I was uh, foolish to do that. So although I've lost my job uh, through making that stance, uh, I'm more convinced than ever that I was right. And I've done a lot more research behind it now. Um, in a way, I was hoping I could be proved wrong because the implications of what I'm saying here, 91177 inside job, well, people are working up in the country um, 
but it's been a massive cover up uh, and remains so both in America and in the United Kingdom by all politicians, by all police uh, 